Hello and welcome to Wall Street Trainings module on Finance 101. My name is Hamilton Lin and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions, having worked at Goldman Sachs in investment banking, as well as Bank of America Securities in the mergers and acquisitions group, as well as two other boutique investment banks, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. I am a CFA charter holder as well and the president and founder of Wall Street Training. In the next a little segment, we will go through an explanation of the basic financial concepts that one must absolutely master, what we call the Finance 101, Introduction to Finance Topics, that one must absolutely know in order to be able to understand the concepts in the basic financial modeling, valuation, how to analyze, and rip apart companies. With that in mind, let's turn to our slides let's now at this take point. a look at the last concept that we're going to talk about, the weighted average cost of capital. The cost of equity, we had already agreed, is the CAPM SML, and this estimates only one source of a firm's capital, in this case, equity. However, for a company, there are multiple sources of capital. Typically, we have equity, which again is via CAPM, and we have debt, and we'll talk about how to estimate the cost of debt shortly via interest or coupon, and then we have potentially preferreds or other forms. Preferred is simply a hybrid of equity and debt. Therefore, to calculate the entire firm's cost of capital, what we are saying is, if I know that I make X percent on equity, 12% is my required return, and my cost of debt, let's say 7% on a pre-tax basis, and let's say I don't have any preferred for now to keep the math simple, what we're saying is, what is the blend of my weighted average cost of capital? Folks, think about this for a second here. A company needs capital to grow and invest in its business. Where are they going to get their capital from? Equity sources or debt sources? If they're going to get their money from either equity or debt, and there's a cost associated to each of these components of capital, let's now figure out on the entire company what is the weighted average cost of obtaining this capital. This whack is important. Why is this important? Because you will take this whack and you will compare it against the internal rate of return. If the whack is less than the internal rate of return. In other words, it costs me, let's say hypothetically, 10% to get my funds and my project should return 15%. You should definitely invest in the project. However, if the opposite is true, if WAC is greater than the IRR, that means you have not made your internal hurdle. You have not made up the amount of money that you need to pay to obtain that cost of capital to fund that project. And if that's the case there, then you will have a losing proposition. You should not do the project. So now, let's look at how we calculate the weighted average cost of capital. It's a very straightforward assumption. Going back to our WAC, let's actually see how this is calculated. If we have our cost of debt and the percentage of our funds that came from debt, our weight on debt, our cost of equity via CAPM and our respective weight of equity, the percentage that, of our capital that came from equity, and the same thing for our preferreds, what we are saying is the following. Take a simple weighted average. It's very straightforward. Cost of debt is going to be the marginal cost of debt on an after-tax basis. Cost of equity is via CAPM, as we talked about, and cost of preferred is whatever the cost of the preferred is. To calculate the WAC, let's assume that we have a capital structure. The sources of our funds were 75% equity and 25% debt. What this means is, let's assume our cost of equity via CAPM is 12% and we issue debt as 7%. Assuming a tax rate of 40%, let's take a look at how we calculate our WAC. If we have a 12% cost of equity, that's this component here, we would take 75% of this because 75% of all our capital comes from equity. This actually equates to 9%. To this, we will add 7% of our cost of debt, but we must always remember to after tax, take the after tax cost of debt. So that's 1 minus 40% or 1 minus T, and that equals 4.2%, so 7% times 60% times 25%, because our debt is only 25% of our capital structure. This gets us to 1.05%. And therefore, the entire weighted average cost of capital is simply the sum of this 9 and this 1.5%. So when you look at it from that aspect, all we're doing is taking the respective weights and multiplying it, multiplying it by the actual cost of each of those sources of capital. And that is how you calculate the weighted average cost of capital. One last point on this whack in terms of the bigger picture. Don't forget, if you're trying to figure out, let's say, dividends for, via the dividend discount model, or for a stock specifically. 
What we're trying to say here is you must use the cost of equity. You must match the discount rate with the actual asset. If you're trying to figure out the cost of capital for the company and you have the free cash flows to firm, for instance, that you must use the WAC. You must match the actual discount rate with the actual asset.